promise this vlog isn't going to be too much about food because I have a lot of books to read and I want to talk about those and not talk about food for an hour, but I made gingerbread waffles. It's like buckwheat waffles with gingerbread spices and molasses in them and then I topped it with applesauce that I made this fall and had frozen and some cheese on the side and I think it's a pretty good brunch to kick off the Queer Lit Readathon. Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is December 5th today, which means two very exciting things have happened. One, the less exciting, our Christmas tree was delivered this morning and it's slowly unfolding in the living room and making the whole house smell lovely. Much more excitingly though, thing two is that it is the first day of the Queer Lit Readathon and that means that I get to start some books that I have been so excited about. I actually cheated just a touch and started one of them last night and I started another one this morning, but I will tell you all about them now. The first book I'm reading for the Queer Lit Readathon is Emberlobe by, I think it's Lara Elena Donnelly. And this is a fantasy novel without magic, but with spies and with smuggling and political intrigue. I, this is the one that I cheated. I started it last night because I wanted something to read before bed and I was like, these are, I, I'm not held constrained to these rules. So far I feel like it is going to be the perfect book for me. It started first with an old school fantasy map, then a John le Carré quote from Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, which is like my favorite le Carré book, and then moved into like the morning after scene between a spy and his smuggler lover. I already ship it so hard. I am so invested in this relationship and it's been like two chapters. I feel so optimistic about Amber Lowe and I'm really excited to keep reading that. I have taken a slight break since last night. I've been out and doing things. I shoveled the drive. I, that looks like a chore, but it was two inches of powder. So actually it's more like a festive activity. And I've just been sort of like getting a few things done around the house, doing some video stuff. And now I'm gonna wrap some presents. So I have been listening to Sister Outsider all morning. I've listened to like two and a half hours of it already. That is by Audre Lorde. It is an essay collection about her experiences and her thoughts on feminism and especially intersectional feminism. I'm several essays in, I'm so hooked. After the first one, I was sort of unsure if I was going to love this collection or not. But from the second essay on, I'm just in awe. I'm so pleasantly surprised by how much I'm enjoying it. I expected Audre Lorde and her writing to be impactful and thought provoking, but I didn't expect to be having this much fun out of such a dark, not dark, out of such a heavy topic. I thought it would be a bit more difficult to read and so far it hasn't been. So I'm really loving that. I also have a third book that I will start at some point this week. That is A Dream of a Woman by Casey Plett. It is a short story collection about trans women just being people. So those are the books that I have in front of me. As I said, I've made really good progress with Sister Outsider already. So I think I'm gonna take the time that I'm wrapping to get caught up on some of your booktube videos. To my siblings, if you are watching, this and don't want to know what your Christmas presents are, there will be chapters down below and you can skip to after wrapping montage.
cozy afternoons on the couch, call for my poncho, and also for reading so much and just getting so engaged in my book. I've been working on Amber Lowe ever since I finished wrapping and I just absolutely am having such a fun time. It is exactly the book I want to be reading right now. It might be how I'm feeling, but I found the beginning of this book very much a throw you into the action type thing, which I like in a spy book. Right away there's intrigue, there's things happening, and we get to sort of piece together what everything is as opposed to ones where it starts out super slow before you actually get to anything because it's setting up so many things. Also the romance and writing style has what I can only describe as like a fan fiction vibe, and I'm so here for it. I can't put my finger on what element specifically it is in the writing, but there's something about it that just hits all the right spots in my brain to produce like a wow this writing makes you feel good reaction. Popping on quickly before I get back to work after lunch to let you know how I'm getting on with Sister Outsider. I've only got an hour and a half or so of the audiobook left now, which is going so much more quickly than I expected. I was looking forward to reading this book because I knew the content was going to be good, and it is. The content is phenomenal. Lord's ideas, her way of putting things is incredible. I feel like I hate it, but it is still so relevant, and I hate that it's so relevant, and I hate that there are things in it that I'm recognizing that it's been 40 years-ish since this book came out, and we, they still need to be said, they still need to be heard. But despite all of that, the writing itself is also just wonderful. I don't know how to phrase it. I never know how to discuss books like this where they are genuinely gorgeously written and so enjoyable to read and also about difficult topics. I don't know why I'm always surprised by that, but I am. And I guess it's just a good thing. I'm so happy to be so pleasantly surprised by this. I'm so happy to be absolutely loving it and to have found another author that I now need to go eventually read everything by because I didn't know what to expect from Lord's writing. What I found has absolutely blown me away. I know this is my vlog for the Queer Lit Readathon, not like a holiday vlog, and I know the lighting is terrible on my face, but check out how cute our tree is. So uh, yes, I will be using that in the background of as many clips as possible because basically for the last two days I've either been decorating or sitting in the living room angled in such a way that I can look at it because I'm just so happy. I'm also very happy to be making some progress in Amberloaf. I still have several chapters left so I'm not finished it yet but I have read a lot of it over the last two days and I'm still really enjoying it. Okay, I'll admit, I'm not quite as in love with it as I was in the initial chapters. That's partly because, and I'm just guessing here, but it's, I think it's the sort of situation where we start with two people together and then, you know, circumstance happened and they have to be split up. I think at some point in the series, whether at the end of this book or at the end of the series, they'll be brought back together and that'll be fantastic. But like, I did love that dynamic, so I'm kind of sad that it's not so much of a thing right now. It is very much a political intrigue type book. I don't really know how to describe the vibe. It started out with very much a Le Carre gritty realism, even if this is an alternative world type vibe. And I still get a lot of that. I still get a lot of the real people just navigating a weird and convoluted system. But the 1920s sort of aspect of it is getting stronger as well. And for some reason, to me, that feels just it's got a different vibe. I don't really know how to describe it. It's very cool though. I am really enjoying it. I don't feel like I have a good read on the main character. It's one of those situations where either he's playing a long game and we as the reader don't know that yet, in which case something very interesting is going to happen, or he's doing things that, without spoiling anything, aren't the decisions I would expect a main character to make. I'll be honest, I'll be just as excited if that's the case. I won't like him as much, but I always 
find it so interesting and so satisfying when protagonists or main characters don't make the hero decisions. I guess, I guess what I'm saying is I like an anti-hero. I like when the protagonist makes complicated, not perfect decisions. I hit the point of no return with Amber Lowe after I went to bed last night. I started, I was like, I'm gonna read another chapter or two. I thought I had a fair bit of the book left. I guess the last few chapters were kind of short or just really engaging because all of a sudden I was like, well, I, I can't stop now. I have to finish. And I almost started the sequel because it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger. It ends with things like kind of uncertain. It's really not clear how things are gonna go from here. And I really wanna know what happens next. But I didn't because I do have a lot of other books I want to read in December and I don't want to completely derail that TBR. I feel like this is going to be a series that I finish pretty soon. Last night I talked about how there was a vibe that was different from Le Carre and I couldn't figure out how and then I was reading a bit more and I was like, Rosie, you idiot. It's because stuff happens. It's so fast-paced and action-packed and plot develops so fast. That's the difference. I'm not gonna say what happened, but some things developed that I think shed a lot of light on the, well, one of the protagonists. Both of them really, because I keep talking about the protagonist for this book, but really there's multiple and some things happened to one of them, the sort of female main character, and I wasn't sure if I liked how it was going, and then I think things are gonna get good in the next one. Basically, all of this is to say that I absolutely loved Amber Lowe. Well, no, I didn't absolutely love it. I gave it four stars, not five stars, but I did really enjoy it and it was really fun and I really want to read the next one even if it wasn't perfect. The reason it's not perfect is partly because it's a first book and it very much ends on like, as I said, a cliffhanger. What's gonna happen next? What's going on? Nothing's really been resolved. Everything's just gotten really bad over the course of this book. And that's not my favorite way to start a series. I tend to prefer the first book in a series at least have some sort of resolution at the end, but that's just personal taste. It was still a really good book. As I said, I'm really excited excited to read the sequel and the last book in the trilogy now. So I guess I better get back to reading. Well, actually it's, you know, first thing in the morning. So I gotta go to my job. And then this evening, I've got to get back to reading so that I can maybe get to this by the end of December. It's early in the evening. I've edited a video. I've eaten some dinner. I made myself some lovely hot chocolate with maple mistel in it. I have a book that I have been so excited to read. The only book I have left to start for the Queer Lit Readathon is A Dream of a Woman by Casey Plett, which is a collection of short stories that I think center on trans women. I was so excited to read this book that I added it to my TBR in editing because I was like, I, I have to read it. I and now I'm sitting here in my cozy living room with my cozy drink and nothing ahead of me for the evening except reading a book. Do I want to read it? Not even slightly. I'm going to try and get into it. I'm going to try and read at least a couple of short stories and see if I get more into it. I'm about halfway through the first. And it's not that it's bad. It's It seems good. It seems interesting. It's just not what I'm vibing with right now, but that's okay. Maybe it'll grow on me. Maybe it won't. I don't have to love it just because I was excited about it, but I do want to try it. All right, I've been reading for a couple hours now. I've read seven out of the 12 short stories slash chapters because some of them seem to be standalone short stories. Then every other one is like chapters in a longer story. I like, but I don't love this book. Maybe I had too high expectations. I guess not every book can work for me. It's not bad. I'm going to finish reading it. I'm going to continue. Not tonight, but like in general over the next couple days. I'm going to keep reading. I'm not sure what it is exactly. I think it's something about the writing that just doesn't do anything for me. It's not, it's not bad writing. It's not poorly written. It's nothing like that. It just doesn't speak to me. And that's so unhelpful and vague. There are words on the page and they're conveying information, but they're not sparking anything deeper or emotional or more than just K 
conveying the information from the page. I want to like this more than I do. I think the way Plett is developing these characters, I think the types of people she is choosing to write about, I think the types of situations these characters find themselves in are interesting and thought-provoking and very very human, which I usually love. Usually I'm all about anything where the humanity of the people being discussed comes through so strongly. But as I said, in this case, it's just not working for me. I have what is for post-pandemic times, a busy evening. We're going out for drinks and dinner with friends before everyone heads home for the holidays and that sort of thing, so that's very fun. But before that, I did just read two more stories from A Dream of a Woman and my stance from last night holds. The themes are good. The things it is exploring are interesting. The way the people are developed, very solid just doesn't speak to me. There are still three chapters, so maybe I'll be blown away, but I think this is just gonna be a solid, fine, but not fantastic read in my books. Well, that was perfect timing. I had just enough of the audiobook of Sister Outsider left to clean the kitchen and do the floors. All my previous thoughts stand. This was an incredible book. It was so incredibly written. It was such an enjoyable and also thought-provoking reading experience. I absolutely loved it. Huge fan. Definitely going to be recommending everyone read this going forward. I don't think there was a ton of new in it for me, but what it had was phrased so perfectly and everything was put together in such a way that it was still incredibly impactful and still incredibly thought-provoking even if you're fairly aware of the topic of intersectional feminism. So that was great. Super glad I decided to read that. It wasn't super high on my radar until I saw it was on script as an audiobook and that was just fantastic. Now I'm going to have a nice little sit on the couch with some tea and try and finish A Dream of a Woman because I made zero progress yesterday. There's a reason there were no clips and uh, it's because I was kind of a mess. I'm gonna finish A Dream of a Woman and then let you know my final thoughts on that so that I can finish filming this vlog and get it edited. All right, I finished A Dream of a Woman and my stance is still the same. Solid, I see why people love it. I think it's doing some excellent things with regards to writing trans women as just people as opposed to turning them into statements. That part is excellent. I did really like the second last chapter which was quite a bit longer. That was like a third of the book actually and that one because there was more time with the characters, there's more time to see things develop, I did think that one worked for me slightly more than the others. And that being said, the story that was alternating chapters of a longer story, which is probably also about a third of the book in the end, that one I liked a lot too. That one tracked over time, one woman and her experience, whereas the second last was sort of a brief snapshot of some people. But both of those worked really well. I think for whatever reason, Plett's writing just doesn't super work for me when it's super brief. I'd be interested to actually read like a full novel or something like that where you're with the same characters for a longer time of, time of reading. Not necessarily a longer time span in telling, but just more time to see them develop, more time to really get into things. For me, I think that would work better. As I said earlier, the writing, it was good, it was solid, I can acknowledge all of that, but it didn't do anything for me in a super like emotional or evocative response way. I know that's personal preference though, and it is overall a really strong book, and I'm glad I picked it up because now I've read it and now I know how I feel about it. All of that being said, I am going to wrap this vlog up now. It's only like just after lunchtime on Saturday, and I know the Queer Lit Readathon still extends till this evening, but I've read my three books, and I want to get this vlog edited so you guys can see it 
tomorrow, which is a very short turnaround for me. Yeah, I guess that means I better stop talking. Let me know down below, have you guys read any good books by queer authors or with queer characters lately? I would love to hear about those down below in the comments. And if you like this video, please give it a like down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching. Thank you.